Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. A reading of Jesus speaking to the disciples. Hear now the word of God for you. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Fred. Let us pray. Holy God, as we have come before your text, as we have come before your word, as we have come before your gospel, may it be gospel for us. May your spirit open up our hearts so that we can be led to all truth. Sometimes the Spirit works in surprising ways, in ways that we just aren't ready for, in ways that really do work inside of us and we almost look down and go, what's going on? In ways that surprise us. Sometimes it's in response to somebody and as the words come out of our mouths, even we ourselves are surprised at what we're saying because it's the exact right thing that needed to be said. And it's true to who we are, but it just seems like it came out of thin air. Sometimes it's in an action. Something happens and you respond in a way that almost makes your internal head shake. Like, how am I doing this? How did I know to do this? How did I know to give this person a hug or to reach out my hand for a handshake? Because sometimes we don't always know what we're capable of doing. Until the spirit moves. Sometimes the spirit moves to call you to rewrite a whole sermon in the week after you have already written a sermon. (laughs) Because, yes, I'm not perfect either. Hopefully that's not a surprise. But the spirit even works to guide me, too, just like the spirit guides you. Some of you know there's this connection between Princeton and Kingston Methodist churches and the clergy. We work together and the staff, we work together. And we use the same texts for preaching so that if you are here at this church or there at that church, we're going through the same series. And this allows us to work through the texts in a really exciting way, in a collaborative way as the clergy. Jenny and I write our own sermon, so it's going to sound a little different because we're different people. But the texts remain the same. And over at Princeton this week, there's actually three different texts that they, that they have. And with all that's happening today, we have Dana and Leslie becoming members. We have communion. I thought I'd pare it down to just once. We could focus a little bit more. And so on Wednesday morning, I had written my draft of that first sermon on the Galatians text. Yes, not the John text that you just heard. The Galatians text. You know the one, the fruit of the Spirit. It's a great sermon felt really good about it. I felt the spirit moving for me to write it. But then our regularly scheduled Thursday clergy meeting came around and something we do as a clergy every week is we read one of the texts that will be preached on that Sunday. We do something called Lectio Divina or a shortened form of Lectio Divina. And Lectio Divina means this divine reading. We read the passage and we sit in silence. share with one another where the spirit could be moving what the spirit may be pointing out to us what the spirit might be inviting each of us to do in response to the text the spirit moves (laughs) 
I was happy with my Galatians sermon. Maybe you'll hear it later. But maybe not. Because the Spirit moved, and even in that moment with the passage, I said, I, I think I need to rewrite the sermon after this. <laughs> Because even I, your pastor, am trying my best to listen to where the Spirit can move. Even I, your pastor, think that the Spirit could be moving me one way, only to be diverted to go a different way. So today we're in John. (laughs) And if you're looking to read the Gospels, it's common to hear that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are very similar in style and in form. Sometimes you'll hear this word, the synoptics, the synoptic gospels. And that's what it's used for is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's where we get the word synopsis, right? This overall general meeting, this general point of view. And then there's John. (laughs) John is kind of all on its own. And some say that it's, you know, the more theological gospel, but I don't know if I can totally buy that because then that makes it sound like Matthew, Mark, and Luke not so theological. So I don't know if I could say that. Some will say John is the more confusing gospel, and I will buy that outright. John is where Matthew, Mark, and Luke are wondering about Jesus's birth and talking about these birth narratives. John is the gospel that starts out with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the first line, you know you're stepping into a different kind of pool. (laughs) By the time that we get to our passage in John 16, we're in this longer discourse from Jesus, right before his death. It's right after they've had that last supper in the upper room, and it's right before he gets arrested. There's this longer chunk where Jesus is able to give kind of his final teaching to the disciples. Scholars will often talk about this as uh, this final discourse. Jesus points to the Spirit in this time, the Advocate, the Comforter, the one who will be with us forever, a foreshadowing that Jesus, the Messiah, won't be with the disciples forever. So the Advocate will come, the one who is not seen, but the one who will guide us to all truth speaking what is heard from God the Father. And in just a few short sentences, we hear Jesus talk about the Spirit and God the Father. Right away, we come to this understanding of the Trinity, this three-in-oneness. Looking at the verbs attributed by Jesus to the Spirit, the Spirit will guide. The Spirit will speak. The Spirit will take what is Jesus's, declare it, and allow us to glorify God. That's what the Spirit will do. And Jesus starts off this section by saying, I I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I still have so much that I want to tell you or teach you, but I just can't take it right now. Because when the spirit of truth comes, it will lead you. It will guide you into all the truth. In some sense, Jesus is showing his own cards to the disciples. I mean, it is the final discourse, right? If there's any time to lay it out, this is the time. part, Jesus is saying that he did not and could not teach the disciples everything that he wanted to. That everything that we have contained about Jesus in the Gospels is not everything that we could know or could be taught or could be led by the Spirit to understand later. For the disciples hearing this in the narrative of John in this time after communion before the arrest, we can probably safely assume that, at least in part, Jesus is talking about his own arrest, death, and resurrection. Because at that time, I'm sure the disciples would not be able to understand it. And then for the first readers of John, 
again, there's the synoptic gospels, and then there's John, and we believe that John was written after the synoptic, maybe even in the 90s AD. In this time, the readers of this gospel may have fragments of the other texts, but their own world is in upheaval. So maybe the author is even trying to give a nod to these early disciples, to this early church. That the Spirit's still going to guide them, even though Jesus is not with us. And for us, some 2,000 years after this text comes out, what could it be saying to us? This is what I think it is. I think it's that in our journey of faith, Jesus' expectation is that there are times that we cannot understand everything, even about our own tradition, even about our own faith. But that the Spirit can guide us into a more perfect truth. Let me say it in some other ways. From Jesus' lips, there is an expectation that anything taught by Jesus can never be the fullest representation of following Jesus because sometimes people just aren't ready to hear it. The disciples couldn't bear all of the truth. The early church, nor the present church, in all its beauty, cannot bear all of the truth. You and I, if we were to look back over our lives, however many years we've had on this planet, I'm sure there are times where we can look back and we thought we were so sure about our faith. We knew exactly what to believe and what to do in order to be a good Christian, and then the Spirit moved. There seemed to be a more perfect truth that the Spirit led us to. That even we are being transformed still, by the Spirit. Some of us were taught that the Bible told all of the truths that there are in the world. But it seems like Jesus might be pointing to a different answer. Because maybe we aren't able, actually, maybe the early church wasn't able to accept all of the truth that God would want to give to us. It would have just been too much. And so we've reformed and reformed and reformed year after year. And we're still in this transition now. I think this should be the calling card of every seminary, actually. (laughs) That this is the reason why we want to have seminaries and theological education. This is the reason why new theologies come out is because the Spirit is moving inside of us to help us to see new truths about God to us. They've always been the same truth. It's just we couldn't bear it at a certain time. But now we can. The Spirit has been working and is still working to move us to this more perfect truth about God and God's love for us. Because it wasn't that long ago that slavery was seen as something that was good in the church and not as something sinful. Because it wasn't that long ago that women in the pulpit was seen as something sinful. Just last week, Jenny got a comment on her sermon that said women should not be allowed in the pulpit. It's 2023. (laughs) It was not that long ago that there were some rumblings in the church that made the people who are part of the queer community as fully loved by God. I'd say the Spirit is still currently working in the church for us to really realize what it could mean to have a fuller expression of God's love in the church, in the ways in which we love and relate to one another. Because Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, it will guide you into all truths. At the beginning of Pride Month, while some are looking to the Bible to say that it's clear what we should or should not believe, I think we need to be clear about what Jesus has said. Because Jesus tells us that 
all of us that we cannot bear all the truth all the time. So we must trust in the Spirit who will guide us forward. That's our calling. It's to be led, to be guided by the Spirit, even when it seems odd. Whether that's rewriting a sermon after you have a perfectly good draft on Wednesday morning, whether that's a teaching that you have, that you're leading and needing to rewrite it, whether you're feeling compelled to write a letter, or maybe you have written one, but actually you need to go grab that one and rip it up and write a new one because the Spirit's moving. Whether that's picking up the phone and calling somebody, whether that's sticking your hand out to your neighbor you still have yet to meet, whether that's extending grace or forgiveness to somebody that's in your life, whether it's going out of your way to participate in something that seems just a little outside of your comfort zone, not fully to the side where you can't even comprehend anything, but maybe a little outside of your comfort zone because the Spirit seems to be compelling you forward. If you're feeling the Spirit's tug, I invite you to take the step. It's going to look different for all of us We can't know when it's going to happen. I wouldn't have written that sermon on Wednesday if I knew Thursday was coming. (laughs) So you may have done some great work, some great thing, and then the Spirit may move to invite you to do something else. And that pivot may be exactly where God wants you to go. Allow yourself to be guided by the Spirit. Because Jesus still has many things to teach you that at one point you may not have been able to bear, but now you might be able to. And the Spirit, who is to come, the Spirit will guide you to all truth. May it be so. Amen. At this time, we're going to step into our time of tithes and offerings. And we know that many people here at Kingston Church like to give online. And so if you'd like to do that, know that there's a QR code that's in your bulletin you can use to give. Or if you'd like to give in person, there are envelopes in the back of the pews that you can use and you can drop it off in our feed trough because we like to feed more sheep. If you're joining us online, know that you could go on our website to give as well. Or maybe, maybe the offering for you today during this time is actually just allowing your heart to open up a little bit more to where the Spirit might be inviting you to take a step. Maybe looking over the past few days or weeks to see where the Spirit may have been moving or maybe grumbling inside of you for you to pivot and honestly ask the Spirit, to ask God where you might be called to to take one step. Maybe that's your offering today. Whatever it may be for you, Let us step into this time together.